Well, it's official. The Sacramento Kings have their worst loss to the season tonight against a New Orleans Pelicans team that was depleted tonight. And the Kings just had an overall terrible basketball game. Final score from New Orleans, 136 to 104. Um, knowing that the Pelicans are depleted right now with Zion Williamson being out, with uh, Jonas Valanciunas being out, with Brandon Ingram missing tonight's game, the Pelicans put it on the Kings. They came out from the moment it's the ball tipped till the end. They put it on the Sacramento Kings. And it's very disappointing to see the Kings lose tonight, man. Let's talk about it with the numbers. Starting off with the starting five. Demonis Abonis in 27 minutes. He had 12 points, 11 boards, 3 assists. Delmas was 5 of 10 overall from the field. 1 of 1 from downtown. He did make one of his free throws, 1 of 1. But Delmas was clamped up the whole game. No rhythm. No just didn't get into the flow of the game or have any rhythm offensively. You know, credit Larry Chance, Larry Nance Jr. from the Pelicans containing, containing him and keeping him in check. Um, the Kings just was – the starting five was just not good tonight overall. You know, Keegan Murray in 26 minutes, he got two points, four boards, one assist. Keegan was one of seven overall from the field, 0 of six from downtown. Harrison Barnes, 23 minutes, he had seven points, two boards, one assist, one of three from HP tonight. He only took three shots. Oh, one from downtown. He most of his points came from the free throw line. He was five or six from there. And um, Kevin Herter too. <clears throat> Twenty one minutes. He had ten points. Zero rebounds, zero assists. Kev was three of eight overall from the field and two of seven from downtown. And he was two of three overall from the field. Davion Mitchell, uh twenty nine minutes tonight for day. He had ten points, two boards, two assists. Four eleven overall from the field. One of six from downtown. One of one from the free throw line. You know, I will give Davion Mitchell some credit for being aggressive and looking for a shot early on to tip off. You know, I'm pretty sure he heard about the last game and he's seen all the stuff. But uh, the fact that he came out to look for a shot and he was very aggressive, I love the fact that Davion Mitchell took that approach tonight. Even though despite that rest of his teammates and his starters in particular did not play well and struggle from offensively, um, good to see Davion Mitchell actually come out and look for a shot and be aggressive offensively and defensively. Um, let's take a look at the bench. Malik Monk, 24 minutes tonight, 16 points, four boards, three assists. Malik was uh, one of the few bright spots for the Kings. 7-13 uh, overall from the field. He was 0-4 from downtown, but he was 2-2 two two from the free throw line. Del Vadova got 19 minutes tonight, and Delhi was solid, I thought. I thought he played really well off the bench. 7 points, 1 board, 6 assists, 2 of, over, two of 4 overall from the field, 1 of 2 from downtown, and he was 2-2 two two from the free throw line. Um, Keon Ellis was a bright spot too. He got 16 minutes tonight. He had 10 points, four boards, two assists. Ellis was three of five overall from the field, two of three from downtown, and two of three from the free throw line. Terrence Davis had 15 minutes tonight. He had seven points, four boards, two assists. TD was three of nine overall from the field, one of seven from downtown, and he didn't attempt a free throw. Trey Lyles, 15 minutes. He had 12 points, two boards, two assists, two of four overall from the field, two of three overall from the free throw line, and he made all six of his free throws. And Rashad Holmes got 10 minutes. Holmes had four points, two boards, zero assists. Two of, all, two of four overall from the field. 0 for 1 from the free throw line, and he didn't attempt a three point shot. And Chemezi Metu got 10 minutes. He had seven points, two boards, one assist. Mezzi was two of three overall from the field. One of two from the from the from on the arc, and he made both of his free throws. And then Kings picked up the Burton, Danny Burton from the uh, 10, 10, on a 10 day contract, and he got four minutes tonight. And in four minutes, he has zero points, zero rebounds, zero assists. He was 0 of 1 overall from the field. And listen, I saw a lot of hate regarding Keegan Murray and Kevin Hurts tonight. It's kind of reminds me similar to the hate that I saw of Davion Mitchell the other night. These guys are going to go through their, their, their woes. I mean, they're going to go through their freaking dog days and dog nights. And in this case... Yeah, you can say all you want about Keegan Murray and Kevin Herter. They did not play well offensively, and they got to be a lot better moving forward. Make no mistake about it. But overall from the field, I'm just really, really concerned about the three-point shooting. You know, for this, not just for this game. You know, this road trip, it's been a bugaboo. We just cannot put the basketball from beyond the arc inside the hoop. Uh, 26% from night, 11.42 overall from the three-point line. 43% overall from the field, you know. 23 out of 27, that's 85 percent of the free throw line. I can live with that. That's fine. But 15 turnovers and 23 dimes. Um, Pelicans' size and just like their lengthy and at, at their athletic wings really bothered us tonight. They got they're just a quick stepper. Um, they were just a you know a step quicker, should I say? And 
their pace of the way they played tonight, they just ran us out of the building. Um, it's really rare that the Kings get ran by their, by their opponents when they're playing their own pace, against their own pace. But this team, I knew this team was going to be tough to beat tonight because knowing that they have Zion, you know, out and with Benjamin Ingram and uh, with Jonas Valanciunas being out, and this team is tough. They they probably are one of the deeper teams in the in the NBA and in the Western Conference. You know, the Kings got had their work cut out. They didn't play very good tonight, and the starters did not play really well. You know, a few bright spots of the game was you know, Keon Ellis, Malik Monk, Del Vadovia, and had the starters. I thought Davion Mitchell was looking for a shot and being aggressive. You know, yeah, he was four eleven overall from the field, but the fact that he actually looked to shoot the ball and be aggressive. Comparing to all the other other starters, they just, you know, I thought he stood out. And make no mistake about it, got to be better. And the fact that we didn't have De'Aaron Fox tonight, we faced this Pelicans team on the second night of a back-to-back, and they're missing the three players. Uh, very frustrating. Very, very unfortunate for the Kings to not put up a good fight tonight. Um, you know, you can't rely on De'Aaron Fox all the time. I guarantee you, if De'Aaron Fox was even playing in this game tonight, we probably still would have got smoked because... We just didn't have much production from the starters. And that hurts when you don't have production from the starters. So I know fans were voicing their opinion on social media and on Twitter, you know, saying that, oh, Fox, come back. Fox, come back. You know, Fox is going to take his time. You know, he's out for wherever he's out for. He's going to take his time. I think we all have an idea why he's out, but um, it's still, you know, saying that it's he's out due to personal reasons. So. He's out until he's out, and yeah, we hope we hope he's back pretty soon. But this team's got to get back on the win column tomorrow. You're playing a good, fun, young, exciting core in the Houston Rockets. Yeah, their record is where they're at, one of the worst records in the team, one of the worst teams in the NBA. But they got a young, exciting core, and the Kings already beat them twice this year. But this time, the next two games tomorrow and Wednesday are in. Houston and the Kings gotta cannot have any letdowns. You gotta win. You gotta come out and win tomorrow night, and you should be able to win Wednesday night. Um, with tonight's loss, we're twenty nine and twenty three now on the season. Um, you know, look at the Western Conference. This Pelicans team is hungry. They're they're scary when they're healthy, and the only reason why they even fell off out of the Western Conference playoff picture is because they had injuries, and they're slowly coming back into the playoff picture. Um, I'm looking at the Western Conference now. The Dallas Mavericks made a trade to get Kyrie Irving. We will play the Mavericks Friday and Saturday. It's upcoming Friday and Saturday. So we'll see how that duo looks and how they look together. Um, I don't know. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be a crazy, crazy finish uh, of the season when I look at the Western Conference. Monty McNair, if we have moves to make, we have until that, uh, the trade deadline, which is Thursday. I will keep you guys updated and posted if the Kings do make any moves. This is a week that we will find out if moves are made. Currently, where this roster stands right now, uh, it's clear that they need to be added pieces. And I'm curious, and I'm eager to see what they do until now, until Thursday. So even uh, with the Western Conference and even with our Pacific Division, as it pertains to Kyrie Irving, I'm glad the Suns and the Clippers didn't get him because, I mean, the Lakers, even if they would have got him, they still – would not be good enough to make a playoff team. So I mean, you can scratch the Lakers off. I wasn't never worried about Lakers getting Kyrie Irving. Um, they're sitting in last place. They probably would have sat in last place with if they acquired Kyrie Irving. Um, the Suns would have been scary because they that team with Kyrie and Booker and you know that team would have been scary good. Um, and the Clippers too. You know Kyrie. You add Kyrie to Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. That that, that would have been scary good. And I say that. Two teams I mentioned uh, close to, as I say, the Suns and the Clippers are the two teams. Two teams I'm mentioning is because they are our forces to uh, win the division, and I want the Kings to win the division. I want the Kings to not only win the division, I want them to get a top four seed in the Western Conference this season because it'll be such a great accomplishment to get a first round uh, home court advantage in the playoffs. So that's my goal. I want to win the Pacific Division. So I'm glad the Suns. Where the Clippers did not get Kyrie Irving. And in order to win the Pacific Division, we obviously got to stay healthy. And I think there you might have to tweak up the roster. You might have to add some depth off the bench to uh, win that division and to get a top four seed. 
So as of right now, they're third. They're still third with this loss tonight. They're still third in the Western Conference. But make no mistake about it. It's getting tighter. It's getting closer. Um, it's going to be a tight finish. And I think Monty McNair needs to definitely address some issues with this roster. And I believe that he will. So we'll see. And if he doesn't, then that's a that's a uh, that's a video for another day. But we shall see what happens. So with that being said, that's going to do it for tonight's video. I really do appreciate you guys tuning in. I will catch you guys in the next video tomorrow. The Kings got to bounce back tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm saying that's a must-win game tomorrow. So you got to bounce back. You got to maintain your position in the Western Conference, and you got to maintain your position on top of the Pacific Division. So we'll see if this team bounce back tomorrow. Really do hope that this team bounce back tomorrow with the win in Houston against the Rockets. So I will catch you guys then. You guys take care. God bless. Keep pushing forward. Have yourself a great rest of your Sunday night. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.